Hi, I'm Daniel Schneer. Hi, I'm Albert. And I'm Lewis. And this is our scientist interview. Today we are very honoured to have Dr. Christopher Tisdell, Senior Lecturer from the School of Mathematics and Statistics at UNSW. Dr. Tisdell is the winner of the 2006 Australian Chung Kong Award and author of many research publications, as well as a supervisor for countless others. Thank you for joining us and thank you Dr. Tisdell. What sparked your interest in mathematics and how did you get into mathematics professionally? Well. Uh, when I was at school, I really enjoyed mathematics, and by about year 11, um, I, could, I could feel a real passion. I was interested in it, and I was um, uh, determined to work hard to understand it. And by about um, the, the start of the final year of school, I decided that I really wanted to do more mathematics, I wanted to learn more mathematics, um, and I, I intended to specialise uh, at university in it. And I particularly liked um, the challenges of problem solving, and I also really liked the, um, the satisfaction of um, constructing a logical proof and, and basically just understanding things. What do you recall from your first year at university? I think um, for me, university mathematics was totally different to high school mathematics. The subject matter was taught in a different way and there were different expectations uh, on, on the students, basically. Um, we were expected to really understand a lot more detail than at, than at school. So at school you were sort of more um, doing mathematics rather than you know, deeply understanding the, the ideas behind it. That all changes at first year university. We understand that you specialise in applied mathematics, so for viewers, can you tell us more, a bit more about that? Mm, well, traditionally, um, I think applied mathematicians take problems from industry, from the natural sciences, from engineering, and try to apply mathematical techniques to solve those problems. Uh, on the other hand, pure mathematicians, they uh, tackle questions from within mathematics itself. Uh, so I, I guess I, I sort of jump between both fields depending on what I'm interested in at, at the present time. I like to think I can work in, in both areas. And could you help our viewer understand that difference equation and differential equations and also dynamic systems? So the, the, the dynamic equations, differential equations, difference equations, they're all theoretical mathematical frameworks uh, which are motivated by a desire to model the natural world around us. And we live in a very, very complicated um, uh, environment. And what, we, what I, I guess um, many mathematicians are looking for is frameworks from which to uh, mathematically model these, these dynamical phenomena that we see around us. Differential equations, difference equations, and dynamic equations on time scales give us the potential to more accurately model those, those phenomena. We understand from your webpage that you are interested in economics and ecology, so how do you apply um, these mathematical models to um, such fields? I guess for me, um, applying mathematics to ecology and economics, that's something that I aspire to do. Uh, I, I don't think I've quite cracked it yet, but this is uh, what I regard as future work. Um, what I'm hoping is that the uh, dynamic equations on time scales gives the mathematical foundation to um, more accurately model uh, processes from, from economics and ecology. Um, for example, the reproductive uh, dynamics of um, cicadas that have quite, quite um, um, unique um, reproductive dynamics and population dynamics. And so I'm hoping that my mathematics can open the door to, to solve and, and better model some of, these, some of these problems. Right. And what scope is there for uh, mathematics to influence um, such fields, such as economics and 
and others like it? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I think um, there's a great potential to influence these fields. And I think historically, um, this is one of the uh, huge motivations behind mathematics. There's, you know, for example, in the natural sciences, there may be some, some problem that really needs some mathematical rigor put into it and, and um, um, some concept of proof. Mathematicians pick up on that, solve the problem, and then hand it back to the economist, the engineer, the applied scientist. So I think the potential is huge. What does being a mathematical researcher entail, and what do you enjoy and dislike most in your job? Uh, in my position, there's two main uh, tasks. The first one is conducting mathematical research, and the second task is teaching. Now, with um, uh, mathematical research, um, this may involve things like proving theorems, um, or collecting and analysing data and interpreting the results. Um, these kinds of um, uh, advancements are then shared via journal articles, speaking at conferences and collaborating with other mathematicians, other scientists around the world. Now with teaching, that's sort of the other end of the spectrum. Um, I teach many students uh, every year from a range of backgrounds, from um, science, engineering, education, uh, all sorts of um, vocational type um, degrees where these students require some mathematics for their for their study. Um, as far as liking and disliking goes, um, I think there's a, a wonderful freedom in creating ideas and creating mathematics, new mathematics. That, for me, that's that, that, it's it's like um, a painter painting a picture. Um, it's just a, an amazing flashpoint in your life when you. Um, come up with a new result that you're really proud of. Um, a, another part that I like equally as much is seeing the, the sparkle in students' eyes when you are able to express an idea and you see it click with the student. That's just fantastic. Um, what do I dislike the most about it? Probably marking exams, but uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm allowed to say that. Uh. How do you think the role of educators is changing over time and as an educator do you view traditional mediums as limited and how has this affected your teaching styles? Well as you may know I have fully embraced the internet uh, with my teaching and I use YouTube a lot to share my lectures with the world for, for free. Um, I think particularly the internet has the, a huge potential for universities to um, um, use and for educators to really um, share their knowledge with the world. So I think um, the internet, the World Wide Web, is just a, a, a fantastic opportunity. Um, I think also as educators we need to be mindful of adapting to um, technological changes. Um, I mean that there's many um, teachers who still prefer blackboard and chalk and there's nothing wrong with that, but I, th I still think we need to be mindful of, of new technologies. And uh, being, a, being a mathematician, have you ever considered moving into a non-academic se sector? And uh, what are the opportunities about that? I think there's a huge opportunity for um, mathematics students to work in uh, non-academic careers. In fact, the majority, the overwhelming majority of our students go into um, industry, government and education. Opportunities are huge. And in fact, it, the evidence is that most of our students go, go into those kinds of um, government, um, education and, and um, uh, indus industrial type roles. Have you ever personally considered moving into the non-academic sector? No. No, the answer to that is no. Um, and one of the reasons is uh, I always knew I wanted to be an academic. From about the time I was 14 or 15, I wanted to know. I, I knew I wanted to be an academic. I didn't quite know what field, but I guess this is sort of. I, I'm a product of my environment, uh, and I've my, both my parents are academics. My aunts and uncles are academics. My grandparents are academics. So this is partly being conditioned to academia, 
and also partly just taking on the family business. We've all heard rumours about your career as a, as a DJ and um, we've heard you've shared sets with some of the biggest names in the business including Fatboy Slim. Um, please, can you spare a comment on, on these rumours? Mm, well, it's true. It's true. Um, and while I was a, a student at university, I would um, do maths in the daytime and I would DJ at night. Uh, and it got to the point where um, I was enjoying it so much that um, I opened an online record store and so I could you know, share, share um, uh, buy and sell records. And I was doing gigs all over the country, overseas occasionally, and um, um, I was performing with some very big, you know, the world's best DJs. And it was great. When, when I was at high school, I, 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 like most teenagers, I loved music. And I had a huge record collection. And then when I started going to uh, clubs when I left school, um, I thought, OK, I think I'm going to be a DJ for a while and share my music that way with, with, with an audience. Um, and I think for me, the, the, way, the best advice that I was given was um, by a DJ called John Digweed. He said, if you want to be a success, you do your own thing, you put on your own parties, start your own record label, whatever. If those parties and those labels are a success, you'll be a success. Um, given your diversity of interests, do you have any other uh, weird or wonderful things you'd like to share with us today? If I had to boil my interest down, that it'd be mathematics and music. And actually, historically, there's a, a if you know someone who enjoys mathematics, they have some appreciation for music and, and probably vice versa.